2013 has been a wonderful year. We've got new consoles, the Wii U has become a must have, the 3DS has had some of the finest games you can get. Our past few videos have celebrated some of the most exciting, joyous and incredible games of the generation all out this year, from the whimsical majesty of Nino Kuni to the sheer brutal brilliance of Metal Gear Rising. 2013 has been a wonderful year. But don't let that make you forget that 2013 has also been a pretty bad year too. Some of the games industry's worst traits have reached breaking point this year, and at the risk of ruining the good feeling of all this video game celebration we've had over the past few days, I want to talk about it, and I want us all to talk about it too. Microsoft tried to pull one over us all. Their grand vision of a brave new digital future was, thankfully, turned around, but it's worth remembering how awful it would have been for us all. Online check-ins, DRM, trade-in penalties, all these things by themselves were a significant blow to consumer rights, but altogether they added up to nothing less than a deep hatred for us, the folk that spend our money on the games we just want to play. The worst thing is that signs of this digital future have already shown themselves. We have less and less control over the content we buy every day. In the last month alone, Skullgirls and Marvel vs Capcom have been announced as disappearing from online stores because of licensing issues. Skullgirls was saved at the last minute, but if anyone wants to play one of the finest fighting games ever made, they're going to have to track down an expensive Dreamcast copy, something that not many have the luxury of doing. We've seen it before. Outrun Online disappeared recently. It's now impossible to play one of the greatest racing games ever made, unless you already own it. Too bad if you didn't buy it on day one, better luck next time. It's as if publishers aren't proud of what they've released. Games take time and the dedication of hundreds of people to create. Games are already the most impermanent of all media, but where that used to be an unwanted side effect of the advances of computing power, now it seems to be something publishers actively seek. Disdain for customers can also be seen elsewhere. The grind or pay model used by as many small apps has now been applied to full price games. It's been happening slowly for ages, but it's reached this utterly ridiculous nadir with Gran Turismo 6 and Forza 5. These are expensive games with a passionate fan base that have now been screwed over. The party line is that players now have a choice, that microtransactions have no impact on game structure. You can grind through the game's progression and unlock cars, or save yourself the time by, let's be honest, paying silly money for stuff you already bought. We used to have the same shortcuts years ago, but they were called cheat codes. We could choose if we wanted the satisfaction of earning stuff, or take the easy way, sometimes just temporarily so we could unlock stuff to play with our pals. That's gone now. We have to pay twice, at least, for the privilege. Need more examples of the erosion of consumer rights and the relationship between content creators and customers? How about exclusive DLC? Nowadays, your choice of console, or even the place you buy a new game, affects the core game content. The actual content of what you buy. Lifelong fans of game series are being punished with this, stuck between a rock and a hard place because there's simply no way for them to experience the full game without buying multiple copies of the same game. What a shameful, utterly detestable practice that is. It's been happening for years, but it hit home recently with the reveal that Metal Gear Solid 5 will have exclusive content on Xbox and PlayStation. I am disappointed that Kojima would allow his fans to be hurt in such a way. The problem is, how do we fight all this? Money? In forums you see a lot of people flippantly disregard all these practices. These companies are businesses, they say, and money is what they need to continue. That isn't a defence. Time was, developers and publishers simply needed to make good games that we valued, and that's how their business was made. An agreement between creators and customers existed. They make good stuff and we buy it. When did that change? When was it decided that that wasn't enough? And how bad will it get? Will anything ever be enough for them? Don't buy the games then. Oh man, the amount of times I've heard that. Hit them where it hurts by not buying the games and giving them money. The problem is that that's impossible. Forza and Gran Turismo have massive fan bases that need each new instalment. As an MGS fan, I need MGS5. The odds are stacked against us because of course these games will sell well, and the awful practices will be justified because look at these massive sales, folk must not mind them eh? But there is something else companies need, reputation. We live in a blessed age. Customer relations used to be an airy fairy thing that couldn't be quantified. The kind of thing that only came up if you watched Watchdog, or uh, Short Change if you can remember that. Nowadays though, reputation is a quantifiable, almost tangible thing. Every publisher exists on Facebook and Twitter now, and they crave followers. These forums give us easy, public facing ways of making our thoughts heard. If we're unhappy with something, and by God we should be unhappy about a lot, we can let everyone know about it and make publishers aware of our conversations. It just takes mass to do it. 
Microsoft U-turn because of the mass of public outcry, and we can do it again. We need to keep up the pressure and get these things fixed. They need to realise that we're the ones they answer to. When they make exclusive deals with shops or platform holders, we lose out. And that should be their focus, not short-term gains. I'm not saying we should be vulgar. Nobody wants to start an angry mob. But we should air our grievances. We should be eloquent and undeniable in our reasoning. And that's all it takes. So yes, it's been a wonderful year. One of the best even. But that doesn't change the fact that we're losing something precious. Our rights as customers, as players and as owners. Let's make 2014 a better year.